Sean Ross Sapp and Fightful. Uh, a couple years ago, you passed up what at the time could have been a big career opportunity with a new group and another company, and now you're wrestling for AEW. You're the interim ROH Women's World Champion. I mean, I know there's been a lot of ups and downs since then, but like in that moment as you won that title, how did you feel about those decisions? Because I mean, one always leads to another. Uh, I'm always a big believer that the universe has a plan for you. Uh, you make decisions based on what's going on in your life and there's always a path that you have to take. Um, I think it wasn't so much passing up uh, AEW back uh, you know, two years ago, it was more or less I think they were still learning and I was still trying to figure out where I was going at that yeah. time. Um, it just wasn't the right time. To be know. honest, it was oh. a screwy thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, meant retro, I meant retribution. Yeah. Here's what even. happened. That's what yeah. I was talking about. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. She, was working, with, she was working with us <laughs> yeah. and here's why. Um, so obviously I like Mercedes a lot and I had worked in, uh, you know, in putting a match order and a card together for All Out. She was very prominently featured in All Out and I actually was coaching then and worked with you and liked all of her a lot and we got along really well. But it was before the TV renewal. And I went on the Jericho cruise uh, pre-pandemic uh, and it was a, a very eventful cruise. A lot of stuff happened. There was a lot of stuff that weekend and Booker T was on the cruise. And he brought up to me how I'd really missed the boat on Mercedes. And I told him, I was like, I was, that's the kind of, Mercedes is exactly the kind of person I would really like to have in AEW. And I was looking and I was using her on a non-contract basis in the, basically building up to when I had the budget to sign her. Because before the TV deal, our revenue stream totally changed. And you saw me bring in literally dozens of free agents since then, dozens. And she absolutely would have been one of them, but she signed uh, with a competition before uh, I got the contract and it was probably within weeks. So Booker was kind of, it was a funny conversation here. I was like, I was trying to explain to him, I really, I worked with her, we worked on the, the Battle Royal together. We, I thought she was awesome. And I'm now I'm gonna go out and start signing people. And after that, we signed a bunch of big names like Brody Lee, Matt Hardy, and the next year FTR, Sting, and many others and built up uh, a lot of names, and she would uh, absolutely been a name I was really interested in. So that was a conversation I had with Booker T on the cruise. Yeah. Uh, and I, I legitimately was referring to retribution, though. Like, I mean, you passed up that opportunity on T. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then now you're here uh, and you're, you're winning championships. Yeah, the whole retribution thing, um, I think for me, the decision to not be a part of that was probably a great decision for me personally. Yeah. Um, I always believe my legacy has to be me in my truest form, which is as Mercedes Martinez, um, not part of a group or in a mess, and not to take away from anything that anybody in that group, um, they have their own decisions to make. For me personally, in my career in 20 years, I really did not want to change anything that I worked so hard for. The basis of my career has always been I want to do this my way. Uh, true to my form, the truest that I can be very authentic, and it was always Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. And have I turned down opportunities? Yes, of course. Um, and I just truly believe that that was not the direction that I wanted my career to go. And everybody was on board. There was no um, bad press or anything on it. Everyone was on the same page. They understood where I was going for, uh, you know, uh, what I wanted to do for my career. And that was it. And, you know, I left and went back to NXT and kept my career there. <laughs> So it, it was, uh, for me, it was a, a good decision for me personally, that's all. That makes sense. Sorry, I didn't know that's what you meant. No, it's okay. I, mean, I thought you meant all. Now, it's I thought, I, I mean, it's a good story, too. Uh, it's a good story, and also it's, like, true, because I really did enjoy We had a good time at All Out, and then, you know, I enjoyed working with you, and I wanted her to come back, and it was just, there was one, the one that got away, and now we're back together. So Both kind of fit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Who's up next? Yeah. Yeah, right here. Rich, uh, <laughs> Pro Wrestling Illustrated and Graph City Podcast. You said you've had a 20 year career. Uh, congrats on a great career. How do you approach matches now as a 20 year veteran when you're up against a lot of talent that is highly touted, the internet loves these people, and you just come in as the veteran and, and, and play your role? How does it feel to, to play that veteran role now? Uh, you know, I, I, I take it with, uh, with pride, I really do. I think with me coming in and in the old school mentality, less is more, I think my body can only handle so much. You wanna put out the best you can and, and really show that you can go with the young girls or guys, cause you know, I don't care who I'm in the room with. Um, um, I think it's just building my body up and preparing my body up for those big matches and going all out on the big matches. And when you have the smaller matches, you kind of save your body. 
Um, it, it's really just when I go in there, I teach the girls, hey, this is how you can do this better. Save your body for the long run. You want to have longevity in this industry, you really do. And if you go out there and you're constantly just go, 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 high spots this, high spots that, you're going to potentially have yourself an injury and you're going to take yourself out of the game. Um, I truly believe, you know, with me having injuries in, in my career, I mean, out two years here, two years there, it's because I was go, go, go. I was in that mentality just like they were. Um, now, going into my 21 years now, I work a little smarter. I really do. I pick and choose what I can and can't do, but still being able to deliver on those matches and still highlight the girls as well. My match with Willow tonight was phenomenal. And this, we wrestled a couple years ago, and this match is a whole <coughs> flip of what we did and what she can accomplish. My job as a veteran is to lift these girls up and get them to the level that I'm at and show the world that yes, they can do all this crazy stuff, but when they're in the ring with someone like me, they have to learn a different style, different way to showcase themselves. And it's really just getting them to have the experience to be able to do that when they do wrestle other people. And then when they do get to my level, would they be able to take that advice as well? So I, I take it really personally, and, and I really do want them to understand that my job is, if I'm here, I want them to get to and surpass me. Because I, I, you know, my job is to pass the torch at some point in time and, and give them that experience. And, and I really do. I really think longevity is the name of the game. I wouldn't be here 21 years if I didn't think longevity was the game. But tonight was not the night for passing that. Uh, no, no, I'm still in my prime. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, sure. Want to go, Connor? Here. Hey guys, Connor Casey, ComicBook.com. Uh, Tony. Now that you have an interim women's champion, any plan on when the unification match might be on? Yeah, we're looking at the schedule. Uh, it's no secret, I think there's other wrestling shows this weekend, and she had a contractual obligation tonight. So there was no way to work out uh, a title match involving her. I think either match, I mean, either one would have been a very worthy challenger, Mercedes, and obviously we saw Willow also a very worthy challenger. Uh, so I've decided, uh, in the interest of the fans, uh, as we've done in a previous situation before when the champion was unavailable to make a date, crown an interim champion, uh, and it gives a great show and a great match to the fans. It was a great match and a, a great show, and now we have a, an exciting championship to, match to look forward to. So when I can work out a date when she doesn't have her contractual obligations, we, we'll make it happen. I'm very confident. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Two more questions. Will, over here. Phil? Right, right front row. Great. Phil Lindsay, Ramsey Podcast, and the first report. Um, for Mercedes, um, you recently had a match here with Deanna, and of course you came on the top on that one. Um, how are you preparing for the reading? I know are her tricks. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's the concept of reinventing yourself. Uh, reinventing your move sets. Uh, when you wrestle someone, as much as I wrestled Deanna, probably in the last six months, uh, we were practically married to each other. <laughs> so we know each other very, very well. I think in our next matchup, um, I have to pull out different things that no one has seen, up my game, go to training, and really level up the playing field when it comes to her. Because just like her, I think she has to level up because it's on, on a different platform now. Um, I always say that when I get in the ring with anybody that I'm familiar with, uh, people seen it all already between us two, so we have to always up the ante and show them something different that they haven't seen in our previous matchups, and that's really the game uh, that's really challenging for any of anybody who's in the ring with someone uh, who are they're, they're used to. So I think in the mindset, whenever this match does happen, um, you're going to see a different style of Mercedes. Yeah, I'll pull out my usual stuff, but I really do want to go into this with a different mentality and, and treat it as if, okay, this is someone new. What can I pull out that no one has seen yet? Because at the end of the day, I want to be that undisputed champion, of course. That's the goal, right? <laughs> Last question. Second row. Amy Gracia, Big Gold Bell Media. Uh, you mentioned something really important, which is authenticity in your career. So being in your 21st year, how do you maintain your own personal authenticity throughout all the professional wrestling? I stay true to myself. I really do. I believe that the fans and even in the locker room and the girls, I, uh, I, I don't sugarcoat anything. Uh, what you see is what you get. It really is. There is no character when you see Mercedes out there. There is no uh, fakeness to me at all. The way I speak, the way my mannerisms are, it's really me when you see me out on the street. And I believe that that can cater to a lot of people. 
Um, you know, I don't need to play a big character. I don't need to be this big thing. It's, it's just, I always believe when I started wrestling that I just wanted to wrestle. I wanted to wrestle just as me. And, and, and not the glitz and the glamour. I want it to be raw, rugged, thugged, like gritty. And, and that's really what it comes down to. And for me, my lifestyle is like that as well. It's where you just hustle and grind always. You never, never stop, because anything can happen in this business. It can get taken away from you like that. And if I stay true to myself, I know that everyone out there you know, can be true to themselves if they really want it. I don't want someone to change me for them. If I'm gonna change, it's gonna be for me. It's not going to be for anybody else, and if you don't like it, that's too bad. <laughs> it really is, because I'm not going to change for nobody, no matter how much money is on the plate, no matter what fame, because at the end of the day, I'm the one who has to look myself in the mirror. I'm the one who has to be with content with the decisions I've made, and up to this point in 21 years in this business, I'm happy. I, I really am. I'm content with the decisions I made. I don't regret anything that I have done in this business, because here I am, still killing it.